Lucy on Gears. As he's double D's, I'm featuring someone who's doing wonders for the Kaya community through his entrepreneurial skills and has now been awarded with the incredible accolade of being one of Forbes magazine's 30 under 30 African based young entrepreneurs. Unbelievable. Dizwe is a young entrepreneur based in Cape Town who aspires to eliminate the problem of queuing at hospitals and clinics with his business, Iyeza Express. He collects and delivers chronic medication to the patients and residents of Kaya all of this done on bicycles. Hi, Cizwe. Thanks so much for chatting to us today. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me on the show. Cizwe, first of all, congratulations. Uh, I think that's an incredible accolade, and uh, it must prove that what you're doing is incredibly worthwhile and uh, uh, very meaningful. Oh, thanks, 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 guys. Yeah, for me, it's, it's, I'm, I'm very proud of myself, first of all. To, to have been listed on the Forbes. I mean, it's it's not a small thing to to just be listed on the Forbes. So it motivates me that, you know, what I'm doing is, it, it's actually, as you're saying, it's actually good for the community. And it actually can benefit, I mean, everyone around South Africa in terms of waiting in queues and spending money and long hours in hospitals. So for me, I'm very, I'm very happy and I'm very proud of myself. So this motivates me basically to do more. It motivates me just to show that, I mean, I have the potential to actually go further and make this a success. Could you tell us a little bit more about EASA Express and when it started? Okay, EASA e- e- Express, uh, it has been there for a while. It is, it has been, I could say it has been there for, for more than five years, but it's just that it didn't come into my senses. It, it, I didn't realize it, that, you know, EASA Express was there. So basically, it started off uh, basically like three three years ago, three to four years ago, when I used to go and collect chronic medication for my grandparents. So you know, every every um, I mean every week, so I have to I had to go and collect chronic medication for my grandparents, and you know I had to go and stand in those queues. Sometimes it crashed with my with my school times. Sometimes I had to go to school, but then I had to go and collect the, the medication. So. It was very difficult for me because I used to wait there for long hours and almost spend more than two hours. So it was a problem that, you know, I had personal experience of. Then I thought to myself, you know, one day, I thought to myself, you know, this is a problem. This is a problem that's affecting me. And that's, I mean, that's not only affecting me, it's affecting my, I mean, my school life and, and, yeah. and, 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 and my personal life. And then, you know, I thought, I was at the Women Ackerman Academy. I was reading this article of how people couldn't, uh, how hospitals couldn't cope with, with, with a large number of people that actually collect chronic medication, where people were standing in long queues, the hospitals were every day crowded. And, the, and then I started to say, you know what, combined the information on the article and with my personal experience, and then I came up with an idea to start a bicycle courier service that mainly focuses on delivering chronic medication or any type of medication at people's doorstep. The main aim is to minimize the overcrowding of public facilities, to minimize the, the, the congestion at, at hospitals and then the spending of money, having to travel far, so the saving of time. Other people have to go to work, but they cannot because they have to go and get the, the medication. So that's how he has express started. Started from a personal experience and some insights in terms of information I was reading around newspapers. It's a it's a brilliant idea and it, it seems to be working very effectively. Siswe, did you get backing from uh, from the Raymond Ackerman uh, Foundation? I mean, how did you go about starting and getting bicycles and getting people to to, to, to basically employ people and start a business? And how did you work out a model um, in terms of charging people um, to do what you do? Well, that's only the very difficult part. You know, we come up with ideas. The very difficult part is to convert those ideas into into a sustainable business model. Yeah. So for me, that was very really difficult. The RAA, the Women Ackerman Academy, and uh, it has always been there. I mean, even now, they're still supporting me. So they were really supportive in terms of starting the business. There's an entrepreneurial award, which is won at the Raymond Ackerman. So it's yeah. won by the best entrepreneurial students. So the best student who shows the best qualities of being an entrepreneur, of being a successful entrepreneur, 
gets to win the prize. So the prize money is 10,000 rand. So I won that prize at the Women Ackerman Academy. And I started off with two bicycles. I bought two bicycles, a few bags, and just a few t-shirts. And then I bought a phone. Just the, the main things that I needed to start the business. And then I started off with my, my, with my grandparents. And then my grandparents actually, they referred me to other people who they know that they normally see when they're going chronic medication. And then that's how it grew. It grew. And, you know, being at a hospital every day, people started noticing me. I mean, started noticing me, like, what are you doing here? They well, must I mean, have, we see you here every day, yeah. They must have thought you were so, very sick. <laughs> Yeah, I definitely. Maybe they said, no, this guy's coming to hospital every time. You see this guy. Even the staff. Even the staff are like, why are you here all the time? So, and then I approached, yeah, and then I approached the, the facility manager. And then we started talking. Then I started off his research. So I started off doing research, asking people, what do they think about the service? How much are they willing to pay? Okay. That's how the model came about. We, we did market research to evaluate how people actually... What is the response that people want? What do people want? How much are they willing to pay? How much are they willing not to pay? Where do they want their medication to be delivered at? So that basically gave, that, that basically gave us a, a concrete business model based on the response of the people because these are the people that are going to be buying into the idea. So that's how it started and it expanded. Last year in November, I was in the SAB Awards. Oh, wow. So and then I came in sixth place, yeah. So it's the SAB Innovation Awards. I think I had, I had like 15 clients then. I had 15 clients and, and, you know, I was in a competition where there was companies with more than two years. I mean, more than two to three years. And I only had um, like two months because I started off like last year in September. In November, I was in the awards. I was in the top 20 nationally. Wow. And, and yeah, even though I didn't win, but I won... 100,000 rand, so I didn't come first prize, I came sixth. But for me, that is a big achievement. That's that is awesome. really, really a big achievement. So, no, I mean, yeah, so see, I won. Yeah, are you saying? Listen, it, it, it's, a, it's a magnificent story. I'm just a, a may, I mean, you're 21 years old, is that correct? Yeah, yeah, I'm 21 years old. And, and you just I've have. I'm 21 in November. Congratulations. But the amazing thing is, when you were at the, the Raymond Ackerman Academy, is this where you learned the business skills, the entrepreneurial skills, the, um, the skill to sit there and say, well, if I, I need to start a business, this is what I have to do. This is, besides the idea and the concept, just in terms of, of um, managing it and putting it all business. together, the business side of it, is that where you learned this all? I could say yes. That's where I learned most of the things. Yeah. But uh, you know, as a young as a young person, I've always wanted to do law. I had an interest in law. But even though I wanted to do some law subjects, I had a little bit of interest in business. You know, in the, you know, I mean, in the yes. community. Yeah. Me and my partner we started off an event company, hosting events for okay. for schools around the area. Yeah. But we must manage that because when the money started coming in, we didn't have experience. And we mismanaged it. So, you know, then I thought, you know, since I didn't get the chance to actually pursue my career in law, I said, okay, let me go for my second option. And being at the Raymond Ackerman Academy actually gave me that boost. So I could say, yes, that's where most of the things I've learned in terms of how to start an idea, yes. how to move from an idea phase into a, a, a business model, how to move from a business model and develop it into a business, which I'm still currently at now because even if I've graduated I still get some mentorships from from the RAA team and the directors Excellent. so I could say yes being at the RAA was I mean was the was the real kick in terms of starting this business and just starting a business in general it's Brilliant. incredible how I mean at 21 he sounds so knowledgeable knows everything Terrific. sorted is it a <laughs> <laughs> is it a complicated process getting permission from the clinics to collect other people's medication? Great question. Yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely. That's that's the biggest that's the biggest uh, 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 stumbling block that 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 I think I'm I'm currently experiencing even now. You know, you you cannot just go and take anyone's drugs and and they cannot just give you anyone's drug. I mean, medication. That's that's. Firstly, that's confidential stuff. Secondly, 
you deal with other people's lives. So they, why should they trust you? So that's a really, really difficult uh, stumbling block that I had to cross. But I did it in a way that, in a formal way. So I approached uh, the facility manager. It was very difficult. It was very difficult. At some point, I, I used to get chased out of the hospital and say, some of the staff used to say, we're not going to give you five or, 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 or ten, ten medications. We're only going to give you one, and then you can't collect for the other people. You know, and then I used to come up with a trick. No, no, this is my grandma's. This is my aunt's. This is for the lady <laughs> next door. This is for my, yeah. my cousin. You know, I, 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 I used to come up with tricks and how... <laughs> I uh, just to get them to give me the medication. But I started off approaching the, the facility manager. Even though it took quite a while to actually see it, but I was actually persistent in terms of, I was very persistent in terms of getting the permission. So we started off as research, to research in terms of asking people what do they think about this. Then from the response of the research, then the facility manager said, you know, from this response that I've got, okay, we'll take it to the next step. So now we're busy with the next step of, in terms of developing it and actually getting a solid permission on, a, on, a, on, a, on paper where we could collect in terms of all the hospitals around Kalicha. Now we're only operating in three hospitals around Kalicha. Okay. So now we're working on a platform where we could go into other hospitals and also go in terms of to other neighborhoods such as Kukule, to Nyanga. So we're also in talks with the uh, with the health department, so we're trying to get them also on board in terms of operating provincially. But that, for me, that's the biggest stumbling block, but it's something that can be worked out. Uh, as an entrepreneur, stumbling blocks, when there's a stumbling block, it, it actually motivates me that, you know, there's a stumbling block, there's, there's this big wall standing in front of me that I have to just crush. So, that's incredible. Yeah, it actually motivates me. Um, how does the whole process work? How much does it cost? How do people get hold of you? Is it just by word of mouth? At the moment, it's been mostly it's been referrals, so word of mouth. People have been talking about it. Okay, and when the Forbes thing came, the media, newspapers, local newspapers, people started reading about it. People started calling me, asking for the service. But we, what we're looking at now, we we have a few posters on the at the hospitals. So we have a few posters that, that give the give out information as to how does the process work. So the process is quite simple. We we meet up with you. Let's say you call us. You say maybe you want you want you want us to come and collect your medication for you on the next day. We visit you. We need to see where you live, and then we need to explain to you how does the process work. So we need to get your clinic information. So your name some of your clinic information in terms of your folder numbers, your identification documents, in terms of your ID number, so that it could all link in the database at the clinic. So if you come with the wrong information, you might not get the, 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 the medication. So we have to make sure we get your information. And then the next day, we go and collect your medication and it delivers at your doorstep or where you're comfortable at, and then we charge a fee of 10 grand. It, some people say, you know, it does not make sense to charge ten grand, but it actually it actually does in terms of the market which we're in. You know, being in Cali, it's, sure. it's a disadvantaged area. Yeah, oh, you, so you've got to be very sensitive. You cannot sens- charge people fifty rand. You've got yeah. to be very sensitive in your pricing. That's why it's just it's a it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's pretty clever the way that you've managed to sustain it, um, knowing that you your um, your margins are going to be very low. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. I mean, yeah, ten grand is not sustainably in terms of a business, but we're also looking at other business opportunities, such as the health department coming on board because we've been reading about them. I've been studying their budget. I know they've got in the pipeline on the national health plan, which they want to achieve within within 2020. They've got uh, uh, an extra added service which wants to improve patient experience through delivering medication at their doorstep. So we are on something that they want to to actually do so that also gives us the leverage of health department coming on board and subsidizing some of the cost that 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 that's actually in terms of making the business sustainable that's awesome i just have one more question um you started off just delivering to your grandparents you said how many people are you serve, serving and delivering to at the moment now at the moment we're servicing for more than 250 to 300 people but uh, the numbers is not consistent because you know 
what happens is you're given a prescription date for the next three months or four months. Then on the fifth month, you have to go for a checkup. So some of our clients, maybe on the next month, are actually going for, for checkups. So they, they actually go for doctor's checkups to see how is their heart going because these people have to go for regular checkups in terms of after five or six months. Okay. So the number's not consistent, but we know we have more than 200 up to 300 people on a monthly basis. But there's a whole lot, I mean, I mean, I mean, there's a whole lot in terms of the market. I mean, at the one hospital we're collecting, it, there's about an average 300 people in a day. Just imagine. Daily. Wow. wow. 300 people. So, so you guys are very yeah. fit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm getting into the August next year. Yeah, probably. I'm yeah, probably Good getting man. to the August next year. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, Sizwe, awesome. continue the brilliant work. Congratulations on your achievements. Hopefully, uh, you get some money to get a whole lot more bicycles and just thrive and, and grow it bigger and bigger. We really, really support you. Oh, thank you. Thanks, thanks guys. Uh, yeah, definitely. We're looking at expanding into other areas. The sooner, the better. Uh, that's Good awesome. man. That's Good. terrific, Sizwe. Thanks for joining us on Balls Visual Radio. Thanks. And thanks, guys. Thanks for giving me this opportunity. All right. Bye bye. <laughs> Intersection turn on gears with Sasha Martinengo. Weekdays from 12 to 2 p.m. Central African time.